All right, pretty exciting. Got another testimonial. Everyone probably knows this guy, Abdallah, who we just did a testimonial um, when you were at school, right? Yeah. At Akron. Cool story. Actually, I was just thrown off. I know in the testimonial, you were saying that you and your friend bought the program together. I didn't know y'all were both testimonials. So that's what we learned. They came by today. We went over stuff, kind of uh, their programming. We looked at some of their measurements. Pretty cool to see some of their measurements and, and how impressive they are. So wanted to take the time to interview Jake because uh, he's the friend who bought the program. If you watched Abdallah's uh, testimonial, he talked about that. So I know you kind of told some of the story, but Jake, tell your perspective of, of when you, why you guys got the program. I mean, I think this is a great idea. Like I want you guys out there who have friends to really consider this. Like I was telling Al, I was like, this is, there's, there's not like a fluke that both of y'all had became testimonials together on one program. It's because when you get in with a friend, you hold each other accountable and you push each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's really, really hard guys doing it by themselves. So this is a great testament to probably a better game plan for people. Hey, you know, I'm gonna lose money on this. I'm gonna tell two people to buy one program, right? <laughs> but like, I, I would really promote you to buy a program and split it with a friend. I really would promote that. And, and don't, don't you think I'm right? No, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Right, so talk about your perspective, why you wanted to get into it. I think he said you brought it, did you bring it to him? I brought it to him. Okay, so talk about why you wanted it, why you wanted to bring him in it, and, and then go from there. Yeah, so, um, you know, we were always kind of never at what we thought we should be velocity-wise, and, um, you know, we both looked at weighted balls and didn't really, you know, agree with them that much, and we, we like, knew we needed something. So I remember I found top velocity, I don't remember how, and, it interests me and so I brought it to him and I said you know like I think this would be a good idea but I was like I don't know you know I don't really know like if we're gonna benefit from it and he was like you know like let's do it like we could do this and so we both bought it and um, it like it helps with like the training portion of it because like you know you push each other and like when on days where like you might not go as hard as you like think you should you got somebody there to like help you out and so how I mean how so how much work did y'all do together with it? So it was like obviously y'all lifted every day with it. Mm -hmm. um, so you did the throws together. Correct. You did. Um, so it was probably easier when doing it together in like learning everything. Right. Because you kind of like two heads are better than one. Like, exactly. Hey, what do you think we need to do here? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that probably helped. And then you kind of were a third eye. So it's like, did y'all film each other at all? Oh yeah. And so yeah. you're filming each other. That's huge. A lot of guys are like, well, how do I film myself? Oh, so you're filming each other, you're collaborating on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Two heads are better than one. I mean, that's really at the end of the day. Right, and like certain things that like he did well, like I wouldn't do well, so like I would learn from him. And then like we each have like our own strong suits. Like he's like stronger, I'm more mobile. So like, you know, we would help each other like work with like that kind of thing just to, you know, eventually grow together. So we know Abdallah was about 78 around there, right? Mm -hmm. When you started. Mm -hmm. So where were you? I was around 77, 78. Okay, and y'all were at the same school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. playing together and we all kind of same pitchers were y'all starters what was going on pitching wise back, uh, back then both pitchers they were just average middle of the pack we were fighting to maybe hit the starting rotation that in nai it still didn't happen right so cool y'all had a lot of in common did y'all know each other before you went to school there no we actually there? met each other uh when i first got there cool so notice like to talk about the progress so we all hit bumps like so when you hit those bumps were there any key things like patterns that you felt like you guys did really well or helped you have success and get through it and start to make gains through it you want to go? Yeah. sure um yeah no so there are different things that he would excel in that i would excel in and then we get ex not anxiety but like we have trouble with different things mm -hmm. so he's got more knowledge than i do in some areas i have more knowledge than he does in some areas and then Basically, when you work together, he can notice something because he's obviously working on something and then he can notice it on himself. All he has to do is also maybe look at a video of me doing what's on the program and then be like, well, how did you do this, right? And then also at the NAI, it was tough to find someone to find, uh, it was tough to find someone who knew the complexity of how to do things properly, right? A lot of the beliefs there were long distance running and you'll throw 90, right? And that's just not the case. So um, when you put when you put two brains together and just work towards everything uh, coincidingly, you almost progress twice as fast. So were there any things where like you took off in a certain exercise lift or drill, and you were just getting left behind? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, like in the weight room. Extension. So so what did yeah. did you keep up or did you just separate? Let yourself separate. Um, well, at the beginning, so I mean, regardless, you need to get stronger through the program. You know, you gotta you gotta put on size, but. 
he took off just in he's done naturally been stronger than me and uh especially in the, in the cleans uh just a lot cleaner form a lot better hip extension which i couldn't get and so you know as of now i'm actually still working on to get that but i also had to know like my strengths too so like mobility and you know um they're just like like mechanic wise even though he was getting bigger if i like yeah. plateaued oh like we so you probably had other things you were better at so we mm -hmm. talked about that earlier about you know he was good at these things so you you were good at these things and it kind of balanced things out. right like, what? Yeah, like his trunk yeah. being excelling and then mine actually being below par is something I could go to him and be like, well, listen, when you do this, how do you, what do you, what do you right. think of? What do you isolate? And then he does it really so well. So was talking about we measured them on our linear speed tendo units and his trunk was like twice as fast, but his hips were not twice as fast, but faster. So he, what he's saying is now going back, now he can say, okay, so what are you feeling like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and, and you help each other. That, that's what's huge. So. When you got to towards the end of the programming, were you kind of equal in things, or were you still struggling to keep up on some? Um, still, so, especially just in like strength-wise, I was struggling to keep up okay. with him. Do you feel like that would, if you weren't, if you were keeping up with him, do you feel like you probably would have gained as much as him? I don't know. I mean, maybe I don't know if I would have lost anything though of my strengths if I would have just focused on building to what he had. Yeah. So you don't um, know. It's a good point. So he's saying basically, if he would have pushed harder to keep up with those his strengths which is strength um he might have lost some things that he was good at because you do you you can atrophy what you're not spending as much time on to try to trace something else um that's a good point but you know if you could have managed to keep your strengths and, and then done that yeah def definitely so cool so talk about so he talked about when he started seeing his, his velocity go up. Kind of talk about that progression for you. So you're, you're somewhere around 78, and then when do you start seeing progression? In so the I went and was continuing to do the program, and we came back from winter break our my freshman year, which was last year, and I topped 84. So that was like a huge different number for me. And, you know, kept working, and I think about two months after that, I topped 86. But it was you know, like one or two pitches, still sat, you know, low 80s. Um, and then finally, I went to Canada with him at the end of the beginning of the summer, end of the year. And I was throwing and I was sitting like 83, 84. And then on, I was actually my last pitch of the bullpen. I might have just put it together. It might have been a fluke. And I hit 87. And that was like a big number for me. And I was like, okay, well, you know, like this is working because obviously I was getting better. And so the entire, entire summer, a lot of the med ball throws, a lot of lifting, a lot of adding size. And then that's when I got into the 90s. So so what was it like when you hit 90? I know for him, uh, dude, I don't think I'll forget your story. Were you there when that happened? I was there, yeah. Because <laughs> it was funny. It was crazy. It yeah. <laughs> Everybody was just why Everybody turned and just started watching the bullpen. No one was focusing on the game. You got to listen to his interview to hear that story. Seriously, probably one of the funniest <laughs> stories I've ever heard. <laughs> so what was your experience of getting to 90? So mine, he, we knew he had a velocity coming up. And he was like, amped me up. He's like, man, you got to hit 90. Like, you got to do it. And so um, he actually brings this girl that I'm talking to and he says, That'll work. and he says, testosterone. he's like, we got to get your testosterone. Up. So I'm walking out, I have headphones in, I'm in the, I'm in the zone That's awesome. and all of a sudden she's there. I'm like, oh, here we oh, go. Here we go. Now I got to do it. And so he brings her and then he's, she's like sitting there watching me and I'm like, oh, I better, I have to hit it. Like, cause she knows, he told her, he's like, all right, he's got to hit this number. Oh, that's So awesome. finally, you know, I, I threw my first one and my goal was 88 at the yeah. time because just one over and I hit 88 and he's like, all right. And so I threw another one and I was 88, 89, 89. And then I was like, all right. And I just like reared back on one and 91 popped up. And I was just like, it was like, it's like that feeling. Yeah, it's like I did it. I accomplished something. And, and, and guys don't understand like, you know, genetically you develop into a 91. That's different than someone who's, you know, I'm at 78, I'm struggling to play the team and I, I really want to make a change and I'm gonna do all this work. And then you hit 91, there's a lot of emotion behind that yeah, 91 lot, yeah. than the guy who just showed up every day <laughs> genetically and hit 91. Right. Yeah. So that's awesome, man. That, that's, that's really cool. So, you know, so now in retrospect, of course, like I was telling you guys, like the key now is, you know, you're developed athletes. You're not just genetic athletes. You know, of course you have genetics, but like you've worked hard to get to these gains. You have to maintain them now. That's, mm -hmm. that's the hard part. And that's why you guys are here too. We're giving you more tips to keep, keep staying where you are and going up. Um, you know, his goal is 97. What's your goal? Uh, hopefully 94, 95. Right. That's what I want to be. And, and, you know, guys think we're all about velocity. We, we want to be 97, 94, 95, and we want to be effective, right? right. Yeah. Sure. We want to have a good first or a second, third pitch to go with that. Exactly. We want to be able to locate mm -hmm. in and out. But unfortunately, we have to get to that 97, and then we start to build those other mm -hmm. things. Right. Exactly. But 
for, so obviously you have those velocity gains, but you know, what's the perspective on all this? Like now that you've been through it, like he gave us a really good perspective on like the grind and everything. Mm -hmm. That's usually what it is. Like, what do you feel really worked for you in this programming and what uh, inspiration did you get out of it that could help others? It was like hundred percent. It's worth it at the end of the day. Like, if you want to get to the like level that you think you should be at, definitely just put 110% in because that's what is what it takes. And just the fact that like, it's such a great feeling when you actually accomplish something that you know you can do. And finally, like finding something that, as in like Top Velocity's program, that it's not just like go run poles and throw some weighted balls. It's, you know, you're actually putting in the work, stuff that's gonna make a change in you as an athlete, not just as a thrower. Yeah, it's addressing everything. Exactly. Too, right? and, and then talk about it once again. Talk about like the, the what you guys did. Like, don't you think that was an effective strategy working together on this? Like, yeah, do you yeah. really, do, how much, Less, or do you do you think it would have been as effective if you didn't do this? If you'd done it on your own? It's tough because in baseball, you're not an O lineman. Moving, just picking up weight is one thing, but to do it right and to move well is like like another story of it. Yeah. So when you have you know two heads that are able to like go coincidingly and give and feedback exactly. So when you have someone telling you what you're doing right because they're doing the exact same program and you guys are making gains drastically together. Right. That's why Top V is here. That's why we, exactly. you know, I, I could have just stayed in uh, my house and just shown up at f places and helped guys. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to build this facility and, and buy and spend all this money here. Mm -hmm. But the reason I did that is because I want more of these testimonials here. You know, I want, that's mm -hmm. why guys come here. They're like, hey, more guys like me and give me feedback. And that's the coolest thing that happens when guys come here. Cause this is not a travel ball facility. Like we don't have locals here. We have just pitchers in here in top velocity programs and they all just collaborate and help each other and it really works that's why we get a lot of testimonials out of here so you guys took basically what top velocity is doing here and you took it to school by teaming up and i think mm -hmm. that's a great awesome uh thing we've learned from your testimony man. yeah so pretty excited yeah, any last words anything you want to say i think we covered it all man. i mean it shows like how top velocity can actually change your life our exactly. degrees look a lot better our t t talent level that we're going to be playing when yeah. is going to be a lot different oh, we're yeah. different baseball players we look different and that's all because of top velocity thank you man and you guys transferred to the same school which is cool so y'all both had success together and y'all go and transfer to the same school mm -hmm. that's cool it's like yeah sure come on yeah. bunch of 90 guys i'll take them <laughs> <laughs> well cool all right guys well i appreciate it that was awesome thank you very much man.